We've taken a look at the 4-in-1. This time, we're gonna put it into a copter. I peeled down one of my Shrike styles and made it prepped for a fresh 4-in-1. Got a fresh set of 2205-2600s. This is the 40 amp 4-in-1 with the new F4 flight control. I got all my wires and stuff ready to do the install and we're gonna walk through some of the basics and then do some sweet fast forwarding. Now the only thing I really think I have to solder onto the flight control so far is my wires for my receiver. I'm gonna use the UART3, which is right here. It's got a ground, a 3.3, and UART3 is right there, which is great because the Spectrum receiver that I'm using is the 3.3 volt one, so that's fantastic. And then that's it. Um, I gotta solder on power wires for my BTX, which I'm gonna pigtail on with my main power leads, which come done up. I added some small wires to the power cap because I don't like to have any strain on those little leads. They tend to break off over time. So this way I get to mount this somewhere else and I have nice flexible wires to deal with. And that should be pretty much it. This rig I'm going to use a TBS uh, Unify Pro Race Edition because those are all the rage these days. I haven't had a chance to try one of these so I'm excited for that. Um, this has a Foxier camera. I don't remember which number, but I changed the case on it, but I did have to change the pinout of the uh, TBS plug. No big deal. I did that already. I put the motors on. I like to braid my wires because it looks good. These weren't quite long enough to reach to the 4-in-1, so I added a little extensions on there so I can make that look nice and clean. 4-in-1 uh, is going to sit down in there. Now, <clears throat> on the Strike Style, there's normally uh, power distribution board down here and I don't need that so I took that out and I added one mil plastic nuts under here I don't know if you can see those or not but normally um, that takes up the space so that these outside posts match up with the front and rears just a little spacer is all I needed there and then the speed control is going to sit down in there we're going to wire up most of the hard stuff first and then drop it in there it does come with eight little o-rings and I'm going to use them because in my mock-up, it does make it so the whole situation kind of floats a little bit, which is nice. Very small, nice little silicone O-rings. Uh, it comes with the included standoff. Slap it together, solder some wires, have a good time. <clears throat> so, I like to mock everything up, and then I do all my tinning of wires first. So these guys are going to come in here, motor one, two, three. And I kind of, I like to leave my wires a little long so that if I, you break an arm or something gets crashed real bad and the wires get pulled on or it gets folded on or even if you just have to work on the copter a little bit, you have a little bit of wiggle room in the wires. Little extra weight, little extra wire. It, it's, it's not great, but it's better than getting your stuff damaged because the wires could have been just a touch longer. So I do that. So these guys are going to be right about there and I want to be able to switch these just in case. I don't like to do motor rotation through the flight control or through the BL Heli rather. I like to do it through the wires and make everything spin the same direction. One less thing for the speed control to worry about. So if I cut them right about there, that should give me plenty to get them all the right length. So what I'll do is I'll hold those right there and give them a snip. Pull these out, do the stripping and tinning nice and neat. And then do another dry fit to make sure they're gonna fit right where I want them to and look nice. So it should be plenty good to give us a little bit of wiggle room. Start from that side, work my way back. Okay, so that's there. Power wire would be the next thing I need to worry about. On my last build, uh, where is it? This is the, the classic Shrike that I've been flying. I got powered on the left, so I'm gonna try to keep that the same. It just makes it easy on me doing wires. And what I'm gonna probably do, snake this guy around like this. Let's sit next to the post with a little bit of wiggle room so that if your pack comes flying out and stuff gets yanked on, you're not ripping your leads right out of everything. So that should work pretty good. I can snake a zip tie on there, keep it out of the way. Should be alright. It's not too long. Let's see, do a little shorter. This be at least that. So 
we're gonna go with that plus a little. I want to stay inside the post to protect it from the crops. Yes, just like that should be pretty good. Let me keep it right next to the side. Shouldn't get way too bad. A little bit shorter, like that. Mark it. Remember, when you strip your wires, always twist these nice and tight. And then my power cap's probably going to sneak somewhere right about here, maybe. Just a zip tie on it. Go like that. Come back with these guys. Hmm, this one's a little tricky. Could do it on the power wires. Come along the inside like that. I'm gonna do this last. We're gonna get everything else installed, and I'll probably try to tack that guy on top. <clears throat> so just work through, do the rest of the motor wires. I'm not gonna bore you with that. That's the main stuff I gotta solder, plus the the receiver wires on here. So, so next up, I gotta solder in the receiver wires on. Spectrum, this receiver that I'm using operates on 3.3, and this is all set up UART 3, 3.3, and ground. So I'm going to do the gray, the red, and the black right in the top there. So you now, people always laugh at this giant iron that I use for these tasks, but if you just use the corner, just as good as any small iron. Two point three is the power of the red one. In this case, it's more. Little shakes. There we go. And finally, the ground. Now. You will have to go in and activate stuff in clean flight or beta flight, just like any other setup. So we'll get to that later when we do all the setup stuff. But those guys all soldered in there real nicely. Wires come out the top side. My receiver usually sits right on top of my stack, somewhere in there. So this should be more than long enough. And unless I'm forgetting anything, flight control is ready. Motor wires, 4 one speed control install, which is super nice. I like it a lot. Get down to the fourth motor in the lineup here. Make sure I got my wire order right, like that. And then, usually it's just a matter of a little tag. Tag it. Oops. Of course. Oh, there's Marissa. Dropping in with a chicken butt while I solder wires. Marissa. Quiet. All right, so there. What motor wires are done, nice and pretty. Say hi, Marissa. Hello. Got a little more done while you were away. Power leads, power cap, and the VTX are all tacked right on top of each other on my main power here. I've done many builds this way and with VTX that can take incoming power and has good regulators and all that, it hasn't been a problem. I've used the FX ones for a couple years now and have good luck. And power cap, same thing, you want it as close to where the noise is coming from, that'd be the speed control and all that switching and motor running going on. Uh, after this, uh, all I gotta do is drop the standoff spacers on. Um, <clears throat> There are some O-rings that will go on top. I'm gonna to put them on top of the... These standoffs are included with the four-in-one combo. 
And the flight control plug goes like so. Push this all down, make sure it's down on there. Slide this guy down. The pins line right up, that sits on there. I drop these O-rings on top. And like that. Now with the Shrike, I did have to change out my four center screws. These are, I think they're 40 millimeter long screws. I'd, I'd have to double check, I'll try to figure that out. But they're just long enough to do the job here. The kit does come with these nice aluminum lock nuts, so they're nice and lightweight, and then you don't have to crank these down on your O-rings, because what it does is let you just snug these guys up, and you basically have a slightly dampened, I don't want to use the word soft mount, but it is, it's, it's a little bit soft mounted. So there's just a touch of uh, dampening in there. And I like that a lot, not because you necessarily need it, but just for shock damage. It's, I get in a lot of crashes, I hit a lot of trees. It just has just a touch of wiggle in it. All right, couple last minute changes I went through last night. Moved the power cap, relocated the receiver to the bottom, and with that had to extend that receiver wire. Looks a lot cleaner this way. As you can see, the wires are all buttoned up. I uh, routed all the video wires and receiver wires underneath the main power board because there's plenty of room there. I did do a smoke check, plugged everything in, everything works, flight control configured right away. So I'm going to put a few more screws into this and go take it for a maiden.